We're glad that you are here and glad that um, you could join us for this Blue Christmas service. Um, the Blue Christmas service, the name of it comes from, of course, um, uh, Elvis Presley's uh, popular song from the 1960s. Um, other churches or some churches call it the longest night service. As often it will take place on, um, on December 21st which is the, the shortest daylight hours and the longest night and um, a reminder of, for some of us, the darkness that we, we dwell in and that that darkness not only is physical darkness this time of year, but also um, darkness sometimes inside that um, we've experienced um, loss or, uh, and that loss can take a number of different, uh, uh, different means and, and ways uh, and manifestations, um, but uh, the loss is uh, also um, just in this year we've experienced quite a bit of loss, all of us, um, no matter um, what we have gone through as individuals. And so this service is just an opportunity for us to reflect on the scriptures, to reflect on our year um, and the losses maybe we've been through and an invitation for us to pray together about those things. I'm going to invite us to, um, to begin with a prayer. Let us pray. God of mercy, hear our prayer in this Advent season for ourselves and for our families, especially for those who live with painful thoughts and memories. We ask for strength for today, courage for tomorrow, and peace for the past. We ask these things in the name of your Christ, who shares our life in joy and sorrow, in death and new birth, in despair and in promise. Amen. Um, we're going to have a song called In the Bleak Midwinter. You know this, I'm sure, Emily. In the Bleak Midwinter. I didn't mention earlier, but would invite you, and I don't know if uh, Emily and or Tom, and I see someone else has joined us. I'm not sure who it is, but welcome. Glad that you're here for audio, as, at least. Um, Thank if you. you have a candle. Oh, hello. Yeah, this is Kyle Westgard and Kai. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Glad you're here. If you have a candle nearby, uh, toward a little bit later in the service, um, you'll be invited to light a candle if you would would like to do that. Just to kind of let you know, we'll be lighting. I'll be lighting the four candles behind me, um, and then we're, we'll be invited to light another candle if you would if you'd like to do that. Um, starting off with a reading from um, Isaiah chapter forty. Comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power. No one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And now a reading of, of Psalm 121. Emily, are you ready to do that? Yes, I'm reading from the King James Version. Okay. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. 
from whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is the shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and their coming in from this time forth and ever forevermore. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. And a final reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, this is from uh, chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. Um, words that are probably familiar to all of us. And this is Jesus speaking. It's an invitation. Come to me, he says. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, the message portion of the of our service is, is a, um, a lighting of four candles uh, representing the four Sundays in Advent. And with each one is a, a, a um, kind of a reflection, an invitation for us to um, uh, be mindful of and, and call to mind um, a particular loss that we maybe have experienced. Uh, and it doesn't have to be over the last year. It can be uh, any time in our lives. We Losses don't uh, go away after a certain amount of time. We carry them with us always. The first candle we light, we light to remember those persons whom we have loved and lost. We pause to remember their name, their voice, their face, the memory that binds them to us in this season. We hold them before God, giving thanks for their lives in our lives. As I light the candle, I invite you to take a moment to remember those who have died. And I invite you, if you would like, to name them aloud or to name them in the silence of your hearts. Let us pray. Lord, each of us takes our loved one by the hand and leads them to you, the God of love. Here we present them to you. Accept our love and thanksgiving as we entrust them to your loving care. We want our loved ones to be free at home with you. We ask that you save a place for us beside them. We ask that you fill us with motivation and energy in the days ahead when we feel like giving up. Remind us often of our true homeland when we are caught up in the desolation of the journey. Help us to find joy in the people, events, and the beauty of nature which surrounds us Thank you for the gift 
each of these people has been in our lives. We want to believe that we will celebrate the treasure of love with them again when we are all in your presence forever. May this truth sustain us in the days to come. Take our sad and aching hearts and comfort us. Comfort us, for we only feel hollowness and emptiness. God of sorrowing, draw near. Amen. The second candle we light is to redeem the pain of loss, a loss of relationships, a loss of jobs with the security that they bring, a loss of health in ourselves or in family members, the loss of joy and peace in our lives from the stresses which surround us, the loss and loneliness some of us experience as we are separated due to the pandemic from our loved ones. As we gather up the pain of the past, we offer it to you, O oh God, asking that into our open hands, you will place the gift of peace. As I light the second candle, I invite you to take a moment to remember the losses you have experienced. And again, you're invited to name them aloud or simply in the silence of your hearts. Let us pray. God of mystery, we turn our hearts to you. We come before you in need of peace, grateful for the mystery of life, and always keenly aware of your promises of guidance and protection. We want to place our trust in you, but our hearts grow fearful and anxious. We forget so easily that you will be with us in all that we experience. Teach us to be patient with the transformation of our lives and to be open to the changes which we are now going through. Amen. The third candle we light we light for those who experience a loss of direction in their lives. As God led Moses and his people through the wilderness to a new land, we pray that God will hear our prayer. We pray that um, each of us that might be finding a loss of a sense of purpose or direction or meaning in our lives that we might know and discover where we are and where we ought to be headed. The darkness and the questions seem to remain. God asks us to be full of faith, to believe deep within that God is the only signpost that we truly need that God is our wisdom and our guide, and we are invited to trust in his presence. God's words are clear to us. Do not fear, I go before you. Take a moment and reflect on the ways in which you are in need in these days of God's direction, renewed direction. For your life.
Let us pray. God of our depths, we cry out to you to be our guide. Help us to have a strong sense of inner direction and grant that we may have the reassurance of knowing that we are on the right path. Take our lives and use them according to your will. Take all that is lost in us and bring it home with you. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The fourth candle we light as a sign of hope, the hope that the Christmas story offers to us. We remember that God who shares our life promises us a place and a time of no more pain and no more suffering. So take a few moments of silence, reflect on the hope that God may be planting in your heart in these days. Let us pray. O God, whose spirit is known by those whose hearts are thankful and who makes cheerfulness a companion of strength, lift up our hearts, we pray, to a joyous confidence in your care. Guide us when we cannot see the way. Teach us to know that a shadow is only a shadow. And it is a shadow because the light of eternal goodness shines behind the object of our fears. Where there is love in life, teach us to find it. Help us to trust it and enable us to grow in the power of love. So may our lives bring comfort and encouragement to others. We ask it in the name of Jesus Christ whose life is our light. Amen. I want to share a prayer that um, I have always found meaningful. It's a prayer by uh, a theologian, um, um, oh, mid-century, I suppose, maybe a little before um, the turn of the century or the turn of the, uh, the turn of the last century. Um, his name is Ted Loder. And um, he wrote this about um, the marching on of time. And so I invite you to, uh, to pray with me in these words of, uh, of Ted Loder. And then we'll uh, move into the Lord's Prayer together. And, to the extent you're comfortable, join with me in praying that aloud. O God of all seasons and senses, grant us the sense of your timing to submit gracefully and rejoice quietly in the turning of the seasons. In this season of short days and long nights, of gray and white and cold, Teach us the lessons of endings, children growing, friends leaving, loved ones dying, bringing, grieving over, grudges over, blaming over, excuses over. O God, grant us a sense of your timing in this season of short days and long nights, of gray and white and cold, teach us the lessons of beginnings, that such waitings and endings may be the starting place, a planting of seeds which bring to birth what is ready to be born, something right and just 
and different. A new song, a deeper relationship, a fuller love in the fullness of your time. O oh God, grant us the sense of your timing. Amen. Let us join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, if you have an individual candle and are so moved to, uh, to light it as we move toward our closing, um, invite you to uh, reflect on these, on these words. Each of us comes bearing our own hurts, our own sorrows, our own broken places. I want to invite each of you to offer your personal wound to the God who loves each of us deeply and who wants to carry our pain. God waits patiently, gently calling out, give me your pain, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, I will refresh you. I invite each of you at this time or um, at another time to, to light a candle. And as you light the candle, remember that it is God who lights a candle in our darkness and holds us close until we are able once again to shine. Let us pray. These lights, O oh God, in their brightness are only symbols, but as they burn and finally go out, we remember that suffering passes, though memory remains forever. We offer to you, O oh God, those places in our lives still yearning to be made whole, still yearning for the light to shine there, still hoping for renewal and for new life. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. As we gather this evening, we embrace and claim the darkness that is present both in the world and in our own lives. As people who are familiar with the darkness, we also know that we gather to be illumined by the light of the Christ child this Christmas season. May the Christ child, born in a lowly stable, himself an outcast and marginal, bring light, comfort, peace, and joy this holiday season. As we close the service, we have a, 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 another a music number I'd like us to, to enjoy. Um, it's a, a combination of um, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel with, um, I believe it is O Come, All Ye Faithful. Um, and so uh, allow yourself to receive the gift of uh, this music. Friends, I'm gonna offer a benediction and then um, invite us to, uh, to maybe stop the recording. And then uh, if any wanna share a little bit after that, um, I'm, I'm willing to say, I don't know if that means you have to stay as well, Tom, as the host or not, but uh, anyway, we'll, um, we'll just uh, visit for a moment. 
hear these words of, uh, of benediction, a prayer that the hope of the Christ child will sustain you and each of us through this dark season and that together we will once again shine. May it be so through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thanks for coming and, and joining us. We appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you.